So today is the 26th of December, 2021. So not many days will reach the end of the year and finished up with this year. And see how the time um, of just one year this passes by very quickly. And so perhaps we've heard before that all beings that are born animals or humans uh, have time that is consuming them, eating them, swallowing them. And so time, it consumes all beings. It even consumes itself. And nature of it is to be this way. So if we're born and we don't have much mindfulness and wisdom, are full of delusion, um, then time will just consume the hearts of our hearts and all beings like that, and the causes for suffering will constantly be there. But if people have intelligence, then they'll be able to seek out the Dhamma, to have Dhamma, even though they may live at home, and they can practice following the teachings of the Buddha there. And even though there may be some suffering, but they're still able to stay on in this world, to live in this world. So as practitioners, we have the highest goal, which is a heart that is freed from all suffering. And are we able to do that? Well, we can if we have the spiritual virtues to be able to do it. Uh, but for most practitioners, we can't, uh, we don't have those enough spiritual virtues to reach there in this life. And so we're not yet capable of freeing ourselves from all suffering. But rather what we do is we lessen the degree of suffering there in our hearts. And so then we're able to stay on in this world with peace, with happiness. So the Buddha taught us to live our lives in a way that's peaceful and happy, to have a sense of enoughness, getting things in balance, a sense of uh, frugality and being content with the things that we have. And so if we have a lot, then we don't need to worry about that. And that's okay, but we don't go and seek out a lot of things until it gets to the point where we don't have much happiness. There's a lot of suffering in our lives. And so if we have some wealth, if we have possessions, and this um, can give us a degree of happiness, but it's important that we gain these things in the right way, in a way that's moral. And we also know how to use that wealth in a way that gives us happiness as well living our lives in a way that's balanced, in a way that's just right. We don't try and get things that are really fancy or luxurious, because if we do, that's not appropriate according to Dhamma. And so we need uh, wisdom in order to uh, to really find the truth, and we need wisdom. And we also need wisdom in our worldly lives as well. Wisdom in our studies, uh, not getting distracted and caught up in things that waste our time. And that uh, will mean that we get distracted from our studies or distracted from our work. So we need to be cautious about these things in our lives. The things that cause the quality of our life to degrade. So like gambling, for example, and in the present day it's very easy to do that because we can do it online. These teachings of Dhamma, they're online and gambling is also online. So it's something that we need to give up. We need to give up uh, alcohol as well and uh, going out at night and uh, trying to kind of seek out uh, members of the opposite sex. Um, in a way that's inappropriate. And these are the things that degrade our lives and that destroy our wealth as well. Because when we have wealth, then there's a happiness that comes from that. 
But we also need to do know what it is that wastes our wealth and to try to not do those things. It really means that we have wisdom. We know how to use these things well. We know how to use our time well. And if we don't use our time well, then the time that we have doesn't give rise to any benefit. And so time just consumes us, and that's all. But if we have wisdom, then we know how to give rise to benefit, how to use our time in that way, giving rise to the highest benefit. And so through using our time in that way, then the suffering that we have decreases. We're able to live on in this world. In order to seek out and find various things that we gain, the wealth that we gain. This is something that's difficult and we need to endure, we need to forbear with that. And so we need to seek out knowledge, we need to seek out an occupation and apply ourselves to that in order to support our lives. And we can also contemplate the things that we get and ask what is it that we get from this world and from the people who are connected to us. And really the whole world is like this, we're connected in this way. And so there are things, many things that support us, and many people who support us and um, make our lives easier, people who are alive and people who have passed away already. And um, their efforts mean that we're able to travel easier than we were before. We can use different forms of energy. If we get ill, then it's easier now for us to cure that illness. There's the medicines there. It's not like it was in the past. So these are the many things that we gain from our friends in this world and thinking how they have this knowledge and they're able to bring about this development so that we can live a life that's more comfortable, that's easier. And so we think like this, thinking about all the benefits that different people in this world have given to us. And then we also think that I too must be a part of this. I must give rise to benefit uh, both to myself and to the rest of the world as well. So if we can think in this way, that it means that we're aware of the goodness of others and have a sense of gratitude towards them, and the people who give rise to benefit, to goodness in this world. And if we can think like that, it shows that we've got a lot of goodness to us, and this is a blessing in our life, having gratitude. So we should know how to use our time in a way that is valuable and that gives rise to the highest blessing or the highest benefit to be able to manage our time well so that we have time to train our minds. Perhaps we don't get to the level of arahantship in this life to the level of complete freedom from suffering Uh, But we're able to take care of our minds well, and that's already very good. So we have some happiness that comes up, and sometimes there's suffering that comes up, and we contemplate that. There's still attachment there in our minds, but we walk this path that the Buddha taught. We have forbearance, endurance, we have effort, we're able to um, apply our minds. So in this world we need to sacrifice. We should share some of the wealth that we have, share the knowledge that we have, so that we can help one another, and so that this world is a place that's pleasant to live in. We don't harm each other, we have kindness for one another. And we should think that we're born, and in no long time we will have to be separated from each other. So what can we do then to stay in this world together in a way that's balanced, in a way that's just right? 
If we can think in this way, then that shows that we're people who have wisdom. So we also need to train our minds so that they get better, so they are raised higher. And so we know that the defilements and craving is what brings us to suffering. And none of us want to suffer. Uh, But still, they have these things within them, um, the defilements and craving. And this teaches the mind that to take things in terms of self, to take things personally in terms of me and mine. And it's been like that ever since we were born. And we're born and then there's a lot of conceit within the mind. There's this craving and clinging. And that's just the nature of the mind. So this is something that we do need to train. Some people can gain knowledge very quickly. Some people slowly. And some people with a lot of effort. And some people with a little bit of effort. But if we carry on, then we'll all get there just the same. And this is something that Ajahn Chah taught. Uh, that... If practitioners uh, stay close and uh, with a great teacher and they practice without stopping, then they'll get there just the same. So if we think that we've only got a small amount of spiritual virtues to us, but we practice without stopping, then we will need to see the Dhamma. And it's something that all of us can do. Perhaps it's not at the level of giving up all attachments. But what's important is that we gain a knowledge of conditioned phenomena, like time, for example, how this is something that changes, and how forms are something that change. And so we gain that knowledge. And it's not necessary to uh, destroy Um, all of the attachment. But we, in in order to be able to see the Dhamma, but rather we see that the things that we take as self are just nature, that it's natural to be the way they are. So King Bimbisara, during the time of the Buddha, uh, three quarters of his retinue understood the Dhamma. Well, this takes us just for us to change our views, to change the view of self and to the view of not-self. And so we don't need to abandon all attachments to do that. And there's still, in that state um, of seeing the Dhamma of that level, there's still a lot of attachments there. But the suffering in the heart is reduced. So as Dharma practitioners, we are generous, we have a sense of sacrifice, and we help each other out. When we live together in communities, then we need to be virtuous and moral. We take good care of our actions of body and speech, ensuring that they are imbued with kindness and compassion. And so by doing this, then we can live together in this world with happiness. We don't Um, heap up a lot of weapons. We don't do destructive activities. We try to give rise to benefit. And so what we gain from generosity and from being virtuous is happiness in this world. Even though there's still attachment there, and there's still some suffering there when we meet with separation, So we need to train these minds. And when we gain understanding, that happens through wisdom. And all we need to do is see things as being inconstant, as changing, something that's not sure. And so we should practice in this way. And even though there's still some stress, uh, some pain and difficulty, we can still stay on in this world and some happiness, some sadness. And it's just the nature um, of us to be that way uh, since we were born. We also need to train to chant, to meditate, 
during our daily lives to develop as much mindfulness as we can. We also need to gain an understanding um, of the nature of life as well. Perhaps we want for all people to have long lives, but it's not possible for everyone to get that. When people get sick, we may want for everyone to be cured, but it's not possible as well. These things go according to causes and conditions, that people's lives follow their kama. So we should use our time in a way that is good, that gives rise to benefit. And if we do that, then we're not being consumed by time in a way that's wasteful. But rather we know how to use this time well, how to um, gain an understanding within our hearts, how to gain this inner nature of awakening within our hearts, whether that happens a lot or a little. There's some brightness there within the mind. Because normally we um, take things as being kind of separate objects. <clears throat> we see that there's this and that. And we take it as being a self. There's me and my friends. But if we have Dhamma, then we see all things as arising and ceasing. And so we try to stay on in this world with uh, virtue and with a sense of understanding. And if we can practice um, in this way, then we'll gain a happiness that's appropriate for a Dharma practitioner. And then as we carry on going, then we gain the happiness and the joy that comes from meditation as well. And if we can gain this sometimes, during some days, then that's very good. As we carry on practicing, then that feeling of inner happiness, the fullness of heart, increases and increases. And so if we practice following this way, then eventually we will meet with true happiness. And it's possible to do that in this lifetime.